Well, once again, I want to welcome everyone. My name is Jerry Rackley. I'm the Chief Analyst here at Demand Metric, and we are presenting today's webinar thanks to the largesse of our sponsor, Cvent. And Cvent has customers in more than 100 countries that now use Cvent software to plan events, find venues, manage membership data, create mobile apps, send surveys, and develop strategic meetings management programs. So we invite you to learn more about Cvent by visiting their website. What I'd like to do next is take you through our agenda. And you'll see the agenda on the screen. And before I do that, let me just cover a couple of things about what we're going to be doing together today. You're going to hear from two speakers, which I'll introduce in just a moment. Uh, anytime during our presentation, you're encouraged to submit your questions. You'll see on our webinar platform, there's a console with a questions area. So we invite you to submit your questions anytime during our session today. I'll monitor those questions, but we'll hold off answering them until we get to the end of the presentation. But I know that Eric and Jackie both would welcome your questions. And something else just to let everyone know, because we usually get a question about this, so I'll try to answer it right now. We are recording our session today, and a recorded copy of this webinar will be available if you want to view it again or if you want to share it with someone else. And we'll also make a copy of the presentation materials available in PDF form. And an email message with those details will go out sometime after the event from our sponsor company, Cvent. So if you have questions, let us know about that. You see the agenda today. Now let's get on with the introduction of the people that will be making our presentation. And those two folks are Eric Eden and Jackie Sass. And Eric has 17 years of experience in B2B marketing, digital media, online marketing, and marketing web-based products and solutions. And today, Eric is responsible for Cvent's global marketing strategy, marketing campaigns, and marketing partnerships. Our other presenter is Jackie Sass, who is with Merkle. Jackie has more than seven years of experience, including event management, marketing, campaign planning, and execution, both online and offline, as well as demand generation and creating of industry marketing strategy. So those are our presenters today. And without any further delay, let me click all the right buttons and let Eric become our presenter. And you will hear from him first. So Eric, I think you are now in control. Thank you very much and, and good afternoon to everyone. I appreciate you all taking the time to uh, join the call this afternoon and uh, view our presentation. Uh, our goal for today is to talk about best practices for event marketing. At Cvent, we help our customers manage and market well over 100,000 events per year on our platform. Um, we've, we've learned a lot uh, in working with our clients in the last 14 years, and uh, we wanted to share some of those um, tactics and best practices and trends with you today. So I wanted to start out by talking about how important events are to most companies. Forrester did a, a study and one of their key points was that nearly 25% of the average B2B marketing budget is spent on in-person events. That includes prospect events, trade shows, and other types of customer events. And that's a pretty substantial amount of, of the marketing budget uh, for, for any size organization. And I think that the reason that Forrester concluded um, that organizations do invest so much was because events have one of the highest return on investments as compared to other marketing programs, only second to a company's own website. And I think that just speaks to the power of in-person events, connecting with people in person, and being able to get more mind share from people in a world that there is lots of information flowing to people via tablets and mobile devices. And um, so I think that in-person events remain a very strong part of most organizations' marketing budgets. It's a key way that a lot of organizations drive revenue in their company. And so 
it usually breaks down into two categories is online events like the one we're having today, a webinar, uh, virtual events. Uh, some organizations do live video streaming of events for employee meetings as they have employees across the country. Uh, we've even done some of our own events that are that are marketing and thought leader events and we've had thousands of people tune into video casts to see live presentations. And then you have in-person events which include everything from trade shows to co industry conferences, seminars, breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, dinner events, networking events. There's many different type of events but the in-person events in particular um, have, have the high ROI that, that Forrester mentioned and there's a lot of different ways that um, marketers can maximize return on investment and that's that's one of the big things that we're going to talk about um, today. And we looked at um, B2B Magazine did a study and they said, you know, why do people throw events? The biggest reason? Generate leads. Uh, the second big, biggest reason? Customer engagement. They also do it to build their brand, to educate people about their products, to drive future demand for their products, and to sell their existing customers more products, to increase wallet share. So all of these are good reasons to have events and, and the top reasons why most organizations do have so many events and it's such a substantial part of most organizations' marketing budget. It, it, it makes logical sense. And when organizations go to plan meetings and events, conferences, prospect events, there are a lot of things that have to be done you know, with, to plan every event. A lot goes into it. There's finding a venue or a hotel. There's coming up with a budget. There's running email campaigns, creating an event website, marketing the event online and doing social media, conducting online registration. If you're charging for the event, you have to figure out e-commerce. If people are flying in for the event, there's a whole um, lot of work that goes into travel and hotel room block management. Um, you know, giving people badges and 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 uh, and registration uh, packets and barcodes and how do you interact with people at your event? Do you have a mobile app for your conference attendees or do you print out a conference book or guide? You know, measuring the success of your event. Uh, you know, how many people attended? How many people showed up? How many people didn't show up? And keeping track of all this integrated with things like your Salesforce or your customer relationship management system so that your entire organization knows what's happening with all the customers or prospects who are attending your events. There's a lot of work to be done. And so as a result, uh, you know, what, what we often see is that uh, a trend we call the accidental planner, which is that in many cases, a marketing manager or director is, is not a full-time meeting planner, but they're asked to complete all these tasks and it's perhaps 10, 20, 30% of their job. Um, and as a result of that, what happens is, is that 80% of the event planning processes are, are managed manually. It's literally plug and chug in Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Outlook. There's a lot of you know, one-off back and forth and um, it consumes a lot of time. And it's generally not the type of of manual work that people enjoy doing. It's tedious and uh, it, it often is repetitive. And so what we found is, is that people often just happen into that and don't really think, well, maybe there's a more efficient way to do it. And the reason to, to have a more efficient way to do it is because um, the studies that, that we've conducted and we've seen others in the industry do is, is that organizations spend about one to three percent of their of their total budget on meetings and events whether it's employee events or customer events or marketing events it's a substantial spend and companies can save 20 to 30 percent through the use of, of better systems and processes uh, instead of doing everything manually plug and chug so if events are so important, as Forrester pointed out, how can you get the most out of them? It's, it's essentially to increase the attendance at the events with qualified attendees, increase the engagement during the event so attendees have an even better experience, and increase the leads for sales. 
these three things together are what gives organizations a high, higher return on investment you know, for their meetings and events. So I wanted just to talk uh, for a few minutes about how marketers can use their different systems together to, to maximize the return on events. So the question that I often get when I talk to planners is, what's wrong with me just managing you know, the events that I do through Microsoft Excel and, and, and Microsoft Outlook? And the answer is, is because it doesn't tie into your marketing automation system or the customer relationship management system at your company. And because of that, you know, people who are planning and managing an event, they may have a view of what's going on, but their sales team doesn't and their customer care team doesn't. And that's where things start to break down because the team then can't be focused every day on trying to drive more people to attend the event that should be registered, but they're not already. So that's one of the biggest best practices I wanted to share today is, is that if you, can, if you can have an event management system that's integrated with your Salesforce or CRM system, it's also integrated with what you're doing with marketing automation, Eloqua or Marketo, and it can also be integrated with your webinar platform you will be far more efficient and get much better results out of your meetings and events. And so that's the main thing that we always recommend to everybody is to come up with a solution for the organization where they can put these four key systems together. It's the foundation for having better return on your events. The obvious benefits to having all of these things connected is shared data. You get one view of the truth, immediacy of action, if, if, you're, if your team knows that the right people aren't registered and they can look that up at any moment in any day, then, then they're going to take action and you'll get a better result on the people attending the event. And as a marketer, if you're, if you're just using different point solutions and you need to import and export lists between systems, there can be a lot of um, inaccuracies, mistakes, and, and it just takes a lot of time. So having these systems working together is, is really critical to customer success. We've seen it literally across thousands of organizations. Our most successful customers are ones that have these things tied together. And so I wanted to ask uh, Jackie to share um, some of her experience in this area as well. Yeah, thanks so much, Eric. Um, so I'm kind of in a unique situation here at Merkel in that when I joined the team a number of years ago, we were one of those organizations that fell into that 80% in that we managed our events um, very manually, mainly through Excel. Um, so when we started working with Cvent, uh, which integrated with the CRM system that we use here, which is Salesforce, um, we definitely experienced uh, some increased efficiencies. Uh, we learned that when our, our event software integrates with our CRM system that our sales team uses, it really helped us to get a full view of our customers uh, or our target attendee audience. Um, the result is that we were able to release a much more targeted message. So here at Merkle, we segment our messaging not only um, by looking at current and prospective clients, but we also look uh, at those individuals by which industry they fall in. So by having systems that integrate, uh, we were able to, to get a much better view of, of, uh, of those attendees, those prospective clients and our current clients, and we were able to um, to, to, to provide messaging that, uh, that was more relevant to those individuals and we were able to do it much more efficiently and much more effectively. That's great. Th thanks for sharing that, Jackie. I think we've talked a little bit about, uh, you know, at a, at a high level why meetings and events are so important to marketers. We've talked about the, the, the f having the right foundation of systems and being more efficient to get a higher return on events. And so now I wanted to, to give some tactical and, and practical things that, that people can do to, to really turn the dial and get higher attendance. So we want to talk about just there are some tactical things that you can do and how you conduct registration for your, event, your events and how you manage the invitation process. So. Um, it starts with managing your contacts. 
so many people have different different Excel spreadsheets of contacts or access databases or they have contacts from LinkedIn or they have them in their address book or they have them in different systems. So pulling together all of your invite lists is the first step. The second step is putting them in this one central event management system. And then the third step is once you have all of that data together and it's clean and it's organized, sending out personalized and segmented invitations by type of attendee. For example, clients should get one, one type of email. Prospects should get another. Staff working in a conference should get a completely different message. Sponsors or exhibitors should get a completely different message. Uh, for a lot of our the events that we hold, we'll have 17 different types of invitations inviting people to the same event to make it very personalized and targeted for them. And it makes a massive difference because people don't feel treated like one of the masses. It makes a really big difference, not only in the open rate of the emails, but in the response rate once people do open the emails. And so we take it, as do many of our, our customers, to all the level of they have the right person send the invite from the system. Even if it's just listing their name, it's not actually going from them in Outlook. but you know, if you're, if you're going to clients, have it come from the VP of sales or client services. If it's going to staff, it should go from the CEO, potentially. If it's going to sponsors or exhibitors or partners, perhaps the VP of marketing should send the message. These are the people that they know, that they've worked with, that they're most likely to respond to. So, so these things make a big difference when you're at step one and just trying to get people to be aware of your event, open your emails, and register. And so I think... Jack, you also, you also had some insights to share about how Merkle has done this for some of your events. Yep, absolutely. So um, I mentioned earlier that, that we kind of started with that, you know, Excel management system, quote unquote, to, to kind of manage our events. So we, um, over the last few years, have kind of walked through um, the process that you just outlined, Eric, and, um, and uh, a lot of, you know, the benefits of, uh, of what we have found by using a system such as Cvent, uh, an event management system, is uh, again that we are able to tailor our messaging by industry or by vertical or by role even where appropriate. Um, we are able to send messages, um, as you mentioned, Eric, from different individuals within our organization so that um, it hopefully would increase engagement and it would increase open rate uh, if the recipient of that campaign if, if it was coming from someone that they were familiar with, like the CEO, you know, for an internal email or, or from uh, maybe an industry uh, owner for, for someone who's a client or maybe a salesperson. Um, so, so that's a lot of, of kind of what we, the benefits that we've experienced. Great. I think the, the next thing we wanted to share is just um, as, part of, as part of maximizing um, the registration process is is collecting data from anywhere, and um, there's a lot of different places that you can get registrations from. There's an email invitation that we just discussed. There's also having it on your website or having it on um, partners' websites, putting it on things like if your company has a blog. Um, asking exhibitors and sponsors to put up a link to registration. There's a lot of different online marketing ways that you can have that data come in from the web. And then, you know, a lot of people uh, now read the majority of their email on mobile devices. So making sure that when people are registering for your events that it works, you know, on a tablet or even a phone um, does, does matter. Uh, I think that the stat that Facebook came out with is, is that 73% of the people using Facebook are now doing it on their mobile devices. So I think that people are moving more and more towards using mobile to do everything, and that would include registering for events. Finally, there's still some people who, who, who want to call you and they have questions. They might register via phone. Um, some people might walk into the event. So there's a lot of different ways that registrations can come in, and you just have to set up your processes to be friendly to all of those. Obviously, it's best. If, if you can um, put it all into one event management system and collect all of the registrations in one place instead of trying to have disparate 
disparate places for all of your registrations. Um, and the, the registrations via um, desktop or mobile is critical for all the reasons um, that um, I mentioned, but also having a central contact database and having things in, in the process that allow you to um, grow your database, one of the best practices that we use that we have a lot of success with is, is, that, um, is that you can invite, allow attendees to invite guests. So maybe someone is attending your conference and they want to bring one of their one or several of their coworkers. You can add their email address so that the system sends them an invitation. What we've seen is, is that we're able to grow our our database of people we invite to our events by more than 40% by putting in a simple a simple um, process like that. And um, you can also during the registration process collect preferences of people. You know. What type of um, what type of business are they in? You know, what do they want to have for dinner? All of these things, asking these questions during the registra registration process, can make the event a lot better for the attendees. Um, so th the next thing I wanted to talk about is just um, creating a great event website. It seems kind of obvious, but the it is often a difference when people have to decide if they can go to an event or not. They have to convince their boss to spend time out of the office. They have to get budget to travel in some cases. And for some people, it's just, hey, is this really worth my time? And so we see the events that have the highest registration rates. Uh, the marketing teams that work on them spend a lot of time um, creating great event websites. Um, branding for their company is, is done well. They integrate with social media to generate excite, excitement and, and let everyone know about the event. They provide a complete agenda. They include sponsor information. They include speaker bios to compel people to come for good content. They, if, they're, if it's a multi-day conference and it's a ho hotel, they give the information about the hotel that attendees need as well as travel information. And um, in some cases, people think it's appropriate to put up the attendee list so that people can set up meetings in advance. Um, people have different privacy options for that, but the more information that you can provide to attendees to make it compelling, the better. And some of the examples showing on the screen are, are, are just some really um, good websites that you know our customers have done that, that we, we thought were great and got them great results. So we really encourage you to spend the time on a great event website that links to a very customized registration process. These are the things that really drive attendance and can be the difference between you know, success or failure of an event in terms of getting enough people there. The next thing that um, really applies to all areas of marketing, but also events, is, is analyzing what works and, and what doesn't. Um, we look at tons of metrics around every event. What's on the screen right now is just some of the reports that are in our system, and we look at these uh, every day to determine, you know, are we succeeding, are we failing, comparing to past events, what's going right and what's going wrong. There's a lot of different ways you can slice up event data to see if you're, if you're having success and if you're not having success, why. And sometimes we're always surprised when we do things like A-B testing. We, we send out different email invites uh, for the invitation and different email invites for the invitation reminder. And often um, we're surprised. We think you know the invite was stronger, but actually the invite reminder gets a higher response rate. Uh, we test subject lines. You know we, we test um, as time before a conference comes. We test different discount offers, early bird discounts, for example, and we and we look at the metrics behind those to see you know what works and what doesn't, and we learn from that for our next event. So the, the, if you have a good event, event management system and you can get access to all these metrics, this is another great reason. Um, why to not do things manually because you can have all this information at your fingertips and you can measure your success and, and, sh and share it with the others of your organization. Some of the key performance indicators that we track is we look really closely at email click-through rates for the invitations. We look at the registration rates compared to the number of people we invited. We look at the method of registration. Did they come from the email invite? Did they come from the website? Uh, we look at it the attendees, what organization are, with they, are they with, what is their job title, 
And then, of course, we study very carefully the show and no-show rates. And what we've learned, for example, over time is, is that, you know, for, for a lot of our prospect events, you know, we can do better than 70% of, 70 to 80% of the people attending if we do things like we have our team make reminder calls, you know, the day before or the morning before the event. Uh, to remind attendees and answer any questions they have about the location. And so the key is always when you get data, what action you take on it. You can build great processes if you know uh, what the metrics are and you can work to really get high quality attendees and, and, he, and fill the room with the attendee numbers you're looking for. An area that uh, we've been really focused on in the last year is uh, creating mobile apps for events and conferences. Um, and we thought this was an important area to get into uh, for a lot of reasons. The first reason is, is that um, everyone knows the world's gone mobile. Over 1 billion smartphones and tablets will be sold in 2013. That's three times the number of PCs that are expected to be sold this year. The same smartphone user checks their phone 150 times a day. Um, a lot of people are just really addicted to um, the information that you can get from your phone. Some people I know sleep right next to their phone every night. It's the last thing they use before they go to bed, and the first thing they wake up is they do is they check their phone. And you know the average person every day spends 77 minutes on mobile apps and has an average of 65 apps installed on their mobile device. So people are using apps. It's part of their daily routine. So events are an inherently social networking experience. It's an in-person social networking experience. And so it makes sense to use mobile to, to really highlight um, and increase engagement at events. So the solution is to take your event mobile. Uh, we did a corporate meeting summit in, uh, in June in Orlando for uh, meeting directors or meeting VPs at Fortune 1000 companies. And uh, we created a mobile app for the conference, and we shared all the key things that people want, um, all the attendees want during an event, so they don't have to carry around that heavy conference book with them for three days. You can look at the agenda. You can look at the sessions you want to attend that you registered for during the registration process. You can engage with other attendees on social media. You can set up one-on-one -on -one meetings. You can take notes during sessions in the mobile app. Uh, and we found that it really increased um, the engagement of the events, people knew where to go. Um, we also did things like push notifications. One of the funnest things we did is uh, we had um, our night out was at SeaWorld of Orlando, and we had a special event at the Kingdom of the Penguins there. And so we talked SeaWorld into bringing the penguin actually to the hotel during the day to get the attendees excited. And we sent out a push notification via the mobile app and the push notification said, are we in Antarctica? There's penguins in the ballroom. Go visit them now. And attendees just loved getting that push notification and getting that, and getting that great experience. We didn't have to run around and tell everybody there's penguins in the ballroom. It was much more fun to see 500 people take their phone out of their pocket, look at that message, smile, and then walk into the, into the ballroom. So there's a lot of benefits to going mobile, penguins aside. You can replace that expensive con conference brochure that takes a lot of time to create and is very expensive to print. And it's, it's usually out of date right after it's, it's printed. You always get one more sponsor for the event or you always get one more speaker or rooms change at the, at the hotel. So it's great to have that, the ability to just update that information all the way through the event. The opportunity to sell sponsorships and advertisements in the mobile app for the conference. You can highlight your sponsors in a much better way. Who wants to, uh, who wants to be able to tell a sponsor, we put a print ad for you in the conference brochure, but I can't tell you how many people looked at it. In a mobile app, you can tell people exactly how many people looked at, looked at their information in the mobile app, and you can even add calls to action, like have people contact the sponsor or set up a meeting during the event. And it just improves the overall event experience. I gave the example of of push notifications um, and having venue maps of like the hotel and the convention center and, and what, what is nearby the hotel and convention center? What, what, dinner sh what restaurant should you go to dinner at 
the, the night before the conference. So giving all the attendees all of this information right at their fingertips on a mobile device that they're likely addicted to using all day long every day anyways really makes the event experience you know a lot better. And we've actually put out two ebooks that, that you can download um, about mobile apps for conferences and events. Um, the first one is a business case that goes through some of the things I just discussed on why it really makes a lot of sense to have a mobile app for your conference and your events. And then the second thing is a playbook on how to make sure that you can get attendees to download the app and use it throughout the conference. And I can tell you that, that we often see um, over 80 to 90 percent of the attendees at, at an event like our corporate meeting summit download the mobile app because uh, it's just it's a better way for them to consume information and participate in the event. And we go through in these ebooks the tactical playlist of how to do that. Be sure to include a link to download the mobile app on your event website, for example. Be sure to send an email to attendees before the conference starts asking them to download the mobile app so they have it before they leave their, their office to travel. Um, there's a lot of just obvious things that, that, that people can do to make sure that um, the apps get used and everybody gets the benefit you know, from it. And in many cases, we actually see greater than 100% um, adoption because a lot of people will download mobile apps for the conference on both their iPhone and their tablet. And so it's really exciting when, when we see results like that. And social media also plays a really big role um, in events because, like I said, events are inherently a social experience. Um, it is a, it's a great way to promote your event in advance on social media, let your networks know that you're doing it. It's a different medium other than just email. And um, the mobile apps for your conference apt act as kind of a platform to get people to tweet more often during the event, for example, because they don't have to remember the hashtag. They just have to click on the button in the app, and it automatically populates for them. So that's just one simple way about how it increases engagement. You know, instead of collecting a pile of business cards, you can connect with people right on LinkedIn. These are the types of, of things that people want to do, you know, at, at events to, to amplify the event experience. And one other tactical thing that people do to market events is um, you can set up your registration process so that once someone completes registering for your conference, you just remind them, hey, why don't you let all your, all your connections know you're attending? Because that will help you as a, as a marketer and the planner get more people to attend your conference if all of your attendees let their connections know. Uh, so, so we've seen great success from people promoting their conferences and events via viral marketing on social media. We also have two ebooks on how to leverage social media for meetings and events that are free, and, and you can download them. Um, these ebooks talk about how to market your event via social media and about how to increase engagement at your event uh, using social media. And I wanted to share, you know, one example. Again, when we had our corporate meeting summit. Um, we use a tech technology called Zoom. There's others out there. It's called FeedBurner, where you can essentially there may be thousands of tweets going on during your your event or your conference, but you can use tools to highlight some of the best moments on social media to the people at the conference, and then even after the conference, you know, on your website. And so that's just another way that you can kind of combine the social experience with the in-person experience. To, to amplify the value of the event. So social media really can have a big impact before the event, during the event, and, and after the event. Keeping people connected after the event is, is equally as important as the marketing before and increasing engagement during the event. And I think that uh, Jackie had some thoughts she wanted to share on what she's done with Merkel on social media and events as well. Yeah, this is a great topic, Eric, and we are actually still learning how to really do this well. Um, so we're currently in, in a test and learn stage here with Twitter, um, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook, although we have uh, definitely uh, experienced some success with LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. Um, specifically YouTube, we've seen an increased engagement by incorporating um, YouTube videos into our campaign strategy as well as LinkedIn and Facebook. 
um, we we incorporate these uh, these social media channels um, into kind of the whole campaign by uh, using it to help kickstart the conversation before the event actually starts. Um, we continue the conversation during the event and after the event wraps. Um, our goal is to turn an audience into an online community and kind of, again, continue that conversation uh, once the event ends. Um, and just to reiterate, we, we do use LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube mostly um, as an important part of the program promotion strategy. And we're also starting to work with, uh, with other things such as Flickr and Instagram. That's great. I think you know social media is an area that, that really continues to to evolve, and for us and our clients, I don't. It's it's not as impactful necessarily yet as sending email invitations, but we feel that it's an area that we should be experimenting with, very similar to um, to your organization. It, it's about testing and learning and figuring out what works. I'm sure over time, as the social media networks evolve and new ones come out, that there's going to be a lot of interesting ways that events can can get amplified via social media. One last best practice I wanted to share because this has made a tremendous difference for us and for our customers is, is that having a, a really attractive hotel or venue you know, for your event really can make or break it because people are – inherently busy and the more attractive the location and the venue is, the higher the, the likelihood that people are going to take the time in their schedule to attend. And so one of the things that we've done is we created a database of 200,000 hotels and event venues around the world. Um, and it, it's on the CVM website, it's free to use, um, and you can go through it and you can compare um, you can compare hotels and venues around the world. You can even filter down on criteria very quickly. Um, you can see photo albums of the venues and the meeting space that they have. There's meeting space capacity charts so you can see what rooms at the venue would work for your meeting or not. Um, and, and we encourage all of our customers to use this tool so that their events can be more successful because um, finding the best possible venue is really important and can make or break the difference in getting the right number of attendees to come to your event and make them comfortable during the event. If it's the right space, you have the right amount of space, and it's, it's a nice hotel or it's a nice special event venue, it really makes people walk away feeling like they need to come back the next time you have that event. And so this is kind of unrelated to some of the other best practices we talked about, but we think that it's, it's super important uh, for people to, uh, to to really think about that and um, and research their venues carefully and, and think through the right the right venue for their event. So just to summarize, a couple of the key points that we talked about today is events can be one of the most successful marketing channels out there. Uh, tracking activity and ROI for events is critical. Integrate your systems and automate whenever possible. Avoid unnecessary manual processes that just suck your time away and the time of your, your coworkers. Event marketing requires a multi-channel approach, web, email, social media, and mobile. These are all areas you should think deeply about. And you should look for a platform that can handle your, your complete event management needs. There's a, there's a lot of point solutions out there. You can use multiple systems and tie things together and do a lot of importing and exporting. But our most successful clients, you know, come up with the foundation and they integrate their systems together and they make the processes efficient and then they measure the results. So, so these are the things that the advice that we give our clients and, and what we encourage. So that's, those are the things that we wanted to share with you today. And I'd be, I'd be really happy to answer um, any questions that, that I can from, from the audience. Well, thanks a lot, Eric and Jackie. And we do have some questions, as you might imagine. So one of the questions, this one's probably pretty simple. You showed some data on mobile phone. I think it was uh, the number of handsets and devices that were going to be sold this year and some other very interesting data. One of our attendees was interested in knowing the source for some of that data. So if you have that and can share it or if you can send that out, 
that that particular attendee was interested in the source for that data? Yeah, it was from the Pew Research Report. We'd be happy to uh, to, to share that to share the the link for it if we can after after the call. Very good. Okay, thanks, Pew. Now here's another question, uh, and this question is simply. How involved do you have to be in, in events as part of your marketing strategy to justify a solution like the one you've presented? You know, and, and I think what's behind this question, and if I can surmise, is you know, if you're just doing, you know, dabbling in events, <laughs> maybe you you can stick with Excel, but you know, how big do you need to be? How involved before a solution like yours really makes sense? I think that um it depends on the type of event you're running and, and how many events your organization is doing and also how many people are attending the events. Um, we do notice that a lot of organizations, they don't necessarily do mega events with hundreds of people per event, but a lot of organizations will do smaller events that have 20, 30, 40 people and they do a high volume of those. So even if you do smaller events, but the, you get to a volume of them that it's a it's a substantial number then then a system also makes sure for that in fact I think a lot of a lot of events are smaller events versus the mega conferences and conventions and so to the extent that that you you have large events or that you have um, a decent number of people attending a series of smaller meetings and events you know throughout the year um, it, it is important to to have a process for managing those and a lot of our largest corporate clients, their organizations spend millions of dollars on, on meetings and events per year across, you know, their 10,000 employees, for example. And um, a lot of the meeting and event expenses don't come from, you know, one mega conference. They come from the fact that they do hundreds of small meetings across their organization that are off-site at a hotel executive meetings, employee meetings, smaller customer meetings. And so I think that it, it varies, but it, to the point where you get a lot of attendees throughout the year and you're doing a lot of manual work to manage the interaction with those attendees, that's the point when it, it really starts to make sense. Okay, thank you. And another question. Can you please elaborate on the ROI model and what your observations are? Yeah, so I think that um, the economics of most events are that when you go to, to book a hotel, for example, and you have to commit to the hotel that you're going to have X number of attendees. For sake of example, let's say it's 100. You have to make a commitment to the hotel before you start marketing the event that you're going to bring those 100 people and there's typically a cost associated with those 100. So at, the point, at that point, you're committed to filling the room. And the question is, how much time, money, and effort do you have to spend to fill those 100 slots? And if you don't, you know, often you have to pay for the slot anyways. So the, the, the first part of the equation is, is that um, it is making sure that you don't lose money just because you can't fill the room. The second part of the equation is, is that um, – I think the two most popular types of events, uh, according to some research we did with Frost and Sullivan across, across the meetings industry, is, is that are marketing events and, and, and uh, executive events, such as board meetings, investor meetings, management meetings, et cetera. And so for marketing events, clearly the equation is um, that if you get more qualified prospects in the room, the closer you get to the number of 100, the more likelihood it is that your sales organization is going to be able to, to get more sales from it. Um, and I think the third part of it is the efficiency component we talked about in terms of um, if people are doing things manually and it's taking a lot of time, that's time that they can't be spending doing other things. If it takes them twice as long to plan the meeting and event, you know, a lot of organizations' biggest expense is the time of their staff. And so that's a cost. Um, and I think it's important to note if, as well, one of the biggest costs for an event is, um, is uh, finding the, the venue in the hotel, whether it's food and beverage, um, 
renting meeting room and space and uh, and sometimes hotel room nights. Uh, what we found is is that you know when when people um, use an online tool and can identify three or four venues and they get multiple bids, our research shows that people can can lower their cost by 15 percent when the hotels or venues know that they're in competition. They put they put their best foot forward, and that can often mean 15% more. So if you combine all these factors together, um, you can see that you can decrease your costs and increase your attendance, and that is essentially the definition of a higher return on events. Certainly, and, and the key elements of a business case, Eric, thanks. Um, and by the way, we've had several questions also about if the recording of this session will be available and if the materials, the presentation materials will be available. And, and so let me just repeat that. The session is being recorded and Cvent, our sponsor, will send an email out after the event, it may, it may not be today, but soon, that has a link to the recording and a PDF version of the slides. So if you registered by, by virtue of the fact that you're here listening and, and everyone else who registered will get that email. So we appreciate your interest in having access to this afterwards. Here's another question. Uh, this is from an individual who obviously has already got a conference website in place. What if we already have a conference website? Can that website be integrated into Cvent or perhaps vice versa? Can Cvent somehow integrate with the conference, a pre-existing conference website? The answer to that is, is yes, it's possible. Um, a lot of organizations, um, create a conference website and have a lot of information already on their company or their organization website, and they simply link to Cvent for the registration uh, process. Um, and that's fine too. We offer the ability for people to create an entire event website on our platform, but some people already have a company website and they just wanna, when people click the register button, they want them to go into the registration process on our platform at that point. So that's one one way to do it. and. Some people, even after an event has been launched, can still import the people who have already been registered um, and then change the link for registration on their website. We, we've done that in the past as well. Okay, great. So it sounds like there's certainly ways to do that, maybe more than one even. That's right. Okay, and I think we have one other question here unless someone else submits one. And this one says, do you know of any businesses who started running events for prospecting and branding strategy purposes. Let me read that one again. Do you know of any businesses who started running events for prospecting and branding strategy purposes? Yeah, I think I think it's pretty typical uh, for um, for organizations to do uh, things such as um, lunches to to. to invite people to a complimentary lunch. We, in fact, do that ourselves um, across the country. We, we have several hundred lunches a year where we invite marketers and executives to attend and learn best practices such as some of the ones I talked about today. We have different topics. Um, so I think that it is a pretty common model. I know that a lot of other technology companies um, were partners with Eloqua, for example, uh, their marketing automation system, and they have a, and they have a series called Road to Revenue that they go across the country and, and meet with marketers and, and executives as well. So I think that it's a, it's a pretty common model for um, companies to use events you know, for prospecting. And I think for a lot of companies, it's one of their main marketing vehicles to get people out there and meet with people in person. And I'd say for a lot of organizations, it is their main marketing vehicle. So it's pretty, as the Forrester Research showed in the beginning, it's, it's pretty dominant as, as a marketing strategy. Okay, and I would agree based on my experience as well. And uh, here, here's a question. I think we have someone who is interested in perhaps a deeper discussion and wants to know if you have a representative in the Dallas area. And I, I know you have one in the Austin area, but do you have one in Dallas? Yeah, I, I I believe we do. We can definitely follow up and and connect that person, you know, with our with our team. 
Okay, super. Well, I'll forward that information along. And we are out of time for questions, but uh, I want to thank first our sponsor, Cvent and Eric, as well as Jackie, his co-presenter. This has been very useful and, and interesting for anyone who has events as part of their marketing strategy. Uh, if you need to know more, Eric and Jackie have invited further contact. I'm going to send out a chat message right now with Eric's email address and then now another one with Jackie's, and hopefully I'll get that right. It's uh, jsass at merkelinc.com, Jackie, I believe that's right. Yep, so that's that, correct. That is, that is in your chat if you want to follow up there. It's on the slide again. Their contact information is, is there, and I know they invite you to dialogue with them if you have other uh, interests or questions. And so with that, I want to thank everyone again for attending. As you exit the webinar today, you'll pre be presented with an opportunity to provide us feedback. And I hope that you will do that if you have something you'd like to share. So once again, thanks. Have a great day, everyone, and let us know how we can help. Goodbye.